So let's talk about heaven. How glorious is heaven? I titled the sermon today, How Glorious is, is Heaven? And I want to welcome, we got a lot of new YouTube subscribers and app downloaders, so we welcome you all. And just really quick, those that may not know about our church app and our ABC Connections, I just want to point out very quick, we have our Facebook page. You just go to Elmont Vineyard Church on, on Facebook there, and you can like us, and you'll get notifications. When we post things, we live stream our sermon there. We live stream onto YouTube. We also uh, cut our sermon down as well so that we load that up onto YouTube, usually uh, Monday sometime in the afternoon. It's available to you. And of course, we have our church application. And our church application has sermon notes. It has devotional questions. It, says, it has commentary associated with the sermon that I'm going to preach right now. And, and I just highly encourage you to uh, get involved in that church app. And you can listen to God's word. It's a wonderful tool for you to have in your back pocket, right? We all, we, we all have phones uh, in our back pocket or however we carry them. It's our little uh, electronic leash, whether we like it or not. And so use it for God's glory to advance his kingdom in your life. And with that, we got a lot to get into today. So let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you that we can even talk about heaven, Lord, and how glorious it is. With great expectation, we await, Lord, for our bodies to be glorious like you. And that's your promise to us, Lord, that one day, soon and very soon, we're going to meet the King. And so we give you the praise and glory for that, Jesus. Speak to our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name, amen. When we are waiting for something special, there is great expectation of soon-to-be excitement. Right? When we are waiting for something special, whether that's an anniversary, a wedding, a, a birth of a child, whatever it may be, there's, there's great excitement and anticipation and waiting for that joy and that opportunity to partake in whatever it is that we are waiting for. But you know what stinks? When that event doesn't meet our expectations, right? It's a downer. When we're what we're hoping for, when what we're waiting for, whatever we're waiting for to celebrate in the moment and season, you know, the anticip anticipation of waiting is, is sometimes just as much as the joy of the event. You know that? In our hearts, like we're waiting for that. Remember waiting not that long ago, six months ago, my grandson just turned six months old. And just that waiting for the arrival and I wait forward and waiting of a while of another grandchild in February, praise God. So it's a new times and new seasons, and I'm getting closer to heaven, hallelujah, because I'm getting older, but that's all good. But when, when, you know, when we wait for something and that event doesn't meet our expectations, it's kind of like a downer, you know? Like I remember when I was thinking of this opening of this sermon and praying, I just remembered a, a trip that me and my dad took down to Lake Erie. You're going to hear another fishing story, right? But it's so applicable. And I was younger, teenager, and we went down, and he's telling me we're going to go walleye fishing on Lake Erie, man. And I couldn't wait for it. And we just had this little 14-foot StarCraft boat with a steering wheel. I don't even know why they put a steering wheel on that little thing. It's like a bobber bouncing in the water, right? We're going on the Great Lakes with this 14-foot little boat. <laughs> I just trust my dad, right? So we get there, and wouldn't you know it, I mean, I was waiting with great expectation. Couldn't sleep all night. You know how that is, right? Couldn't sleep all night, waiting to get up. At, I think we left at like 3 a.m. because we got to drive all the way down to Monroe. And we got there, and wouldn't you know it, a storm came in. A storm came in. And I, you know, great expectation, hardly slept all night, waiting to fish with my father. And you know, my dad is just as stubborn as I am. And so instead of like seeing that storm and seeing those electricity come through the air, he's like, son, we're going fishing. And so I'm like, okay, dad. We hopped in the bobber. We hopped in the bobber of a boat. And I mean, 
You know, as a boater, if you've owned a boat and you've been out and there's just like, you get a little ways out and you're like, I think we should turn around. And I think my dad did that about 16 times. And he's like, you know, we drove all the way here, right? And my dad was a hard worker and you don't get many days off. And I said, I'm with you, dad. And so we just kept going. And I mean, we, we battled the waves and bounced like a bobber for, it seemed to me like three hours, but it was probably only about an hour. And wouldn't you know it, the storm blew over and the sun came out. It was a glorious day. And, and I'm not kidding you. We started catching Wally, and this is no exaggeration. It's one of the top two fishing trips I've ever had in my entire life where every cast that we were catching a walleye. No kidding. It was so good. We filled our stringer in like 20 minutes. We were taking fish off the stringer trying to get the bigger ones on. <laughs> every cast, no exaggeration. It was crazy. But you know what? What I felt the Holy Spirit as, the, as I was thinking about that story, I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, you know, Brad, in heaven, you're going to catch one every single cast. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord, the joy of his presence. But you know, there's storms of life. You know, there's storms of life. We got to go through things sometimes before we enter into his glory, like we're going through right now, right? Make no mistakes about it. This life is hard. This life is challenging. Relationships are hard and challenging and all the above, right? It's a hard life in a hard way. But Jesus Christ is with us every step of the way. And as Christians, what are we waiting for with great expectation? We're waiting for heaven. Scripture says our citizenship is in heaven, right? We have a temporary working visa. A temporary working visa. You know, we got our visa card and we're just temporarily working here unto the Lord. But our citizenship is in heaven. And the more you study heaven, the more I've just been looking into the scripture, like I can't wait to get there. I mean, I don't want to go there right now, you know, and it's there, I want to enjoy, but I, the Lord, heaven is way better than anything we can imagine here. And so I'm ready to go when the Lord calls me home, and I welcome that heavenward step. Amen? Amen. Let's hop into God's word this morning. We're waiting with great expectation. Romans chapter 8. Verses 18 through 23. We're going to start off there this morning. Paul says this. I consider our present sufferings. Notice he recognizes the challenges that this earth offers us. I consider our present sufferings are not worth comparing. It's not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us. The glory revealed in us. How is that possible? Heaven. Verse 19. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. Verse 22 says, we know that the whole creation has been groaning. We're part of that, friends. Sometimes I groan, especially in the morning, right? Sometimes we groan with back pain. We're groaning or side pain or migraine, headaches. We groan, right? This world makes us groan. As in pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Verse 23, not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, living in us, grown inwardly, right? We groan inwardly, waiting for that glorified body as we wait eagerly for our adoption 
as sons the redemption of our bodies. We are longing to be made new. To be made completely new. We are longing to be made new. 1 Peter 3, 6. Let's turn to that. 1 Peter 1, 3 through 6. It says this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance. You have an inheritance. If you don't have an earthly inheritance, let me tell you something. You have a heavenly inheritance that says this, that can never perish, spoil, or fade away. You got like an ATM that just printing money for you. All right? You don't even have to memorize a pen. You just walk up to it and it's just going like this kind of thing. Right? Never perish, spoil, or fade. Kept in heaven for you. This is God's word. The precious promises of the Lord. Heaven. Never perish, spoil, or fade. Kept in heaven for you. Through faith, listen to this, are shielded by God's power. I need that shield. Don't you? I, I need that protection from the Lord, that shield of faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. And friends, we're getting closer. I think closer than we've ever been before. Right? And we know that to be true because time is decaying, so we are closer than we've ever been before. But I mean, it's getting closer for that last trumpet to be sounded. A sound off of the trumpet, Lord, and we're going to meet the Lord in the sky. In this, verse 6 says, we greatly rejoice. And again, it's repeated. Peter says this, now for a little while, we have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. But friends, here's the reality. We wait for heaven where all is going to be faded away and we are going to be made new. Here's the promises from these two passages. Soon and very soon, we will be liberated from bondage, from the bondages and strongholds of this world. We will experience no more decay we are going to get an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade where the glory of God will always be felt in our souls. Where the glory of God will always be felt in our souls. You know, I've, I've said this before during the sermon series, when we get into the presence of God, whether it's through prayer or whether it's through this morning when we you know, sing praises to him and we feel the presence of God, right? And then sometimes that, you know, it just fades away and we go into our work life or, or our challenges or our trials. But can you imagine where the, pe the, the presence of God is constantly, always saturating our souls? Every single day for eternity, the presence of God, the presence of God. And Jesus said this, in my Father's house are many mansions, and I am going to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back so that you may be where I am. Jesus is coming back. He's coming back. And right now, all Christians who have gone on before us, as we have studied this already in week one, they are in paradise. Paradise means walled garden. I believe it's the Garden of Eden. As we have studied such things, that's my personal theological beliefs. There's lots of beliefs out there. But all Christians who have gone on before us, Jesus said to that thief on the cross, right, today you shall be with what? Me in paradise. So we wait with great expectation as Christians that are still alive here on earth for Jesus Christ's return. And the Lord has promised us a new heaven and a new earth. And I want to look at some uh, prophetic passages that talk about Christ making everything new. If we could pull that up. 
The word says, I will create a new heaven and a new earth. Isaiah talks about this. The, the prophets foretold about this new heaven and new earth. A new heaven, a new earth, I will make. And then we read in, in Revelation that, uh, that vision that John was given. And he said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And then Peter says, his promise is a new heaven and a new earth. But here's the reality. For that to occur, the current earth and the current heaven have to disappear and pass away. Did you realize that? The current heaven and the current earth must be destroyed. Here's passages associated with that. It must dis disappear and be destroyed. And, and you may think like I do, like I had the privilege of growing up in the church. And you may be thinking the same thing that I think, like, man, Lord, you're taking a long time. Right? Like, I've been told since I was a child, the Lord's turn is return is coming, and it's very soon, and it's like, Lord, we're still here, and Lord, when are you coming? When, why is it taking so long? I mean, like 2,000 years, like in six days you created, then you rested, and it's taken you 2,000 years to, to build heaven? But here's what Scripture says. I want to remind you of this. And sometimes we think, you know, well, man, the Lord still has to destroy heaven, and, oh, he still has to destroy this earth, and... We, you know, we're not going to get into all the theology of what that says, but listen to this passage because it speaks to the whole. A new heaven and a new earth. But do not forget, 2 Peter 3, 8 through 10, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. It says, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. Thank you, Jesus, for reminding me. As some understand slowness, he is patient with you. Thank you, Jesus, for your patience in my life. When I was a dirty, rotten scoundrel. When I was a dirty, rotten scoundrel, and I mean that, I mean that from my mouth. When I was a dirty, rotten scoundrel, Jesus had his eye on me and saved me from total destruction. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. A thousand years like a day, and a day is like a thousand years to the Lord. He doesn't work his watch like we work our times, right? Not at all. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. It will come quickly. The heavens will disappear. Listen to this. I want you to catch this. The heavens will disappear with a roar. Like, so we think, well, man, this is going to take a lot of time, right? Listen, through God's mouth, God just has to speak it, and it's done. So we think in terms of man, got to destroy the heavens, got to destroy, with the roar of God's mouth, by him speaking it out, like, Jesus, go, right? Jesus, blow that trumpet, angel. It can happen just like that. With the roar of God's mouth, I love that. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. But have no worries. Jesus is making it all new. All new. And when we hear this word new, new heaven, new earth, let me just tell you something. We're not talking about a salvation army new. Let that sink in a little bit. You're <laughs> right. We got Man, I got that shirt at something, right? We're not talking about a Salvation Army new. No, no, no. God doesn't give us any hand-me-downs. I want you to hear that this morning. God is not going to give us any hand-me-downs. He's making everything new. This word literally means this. In the Greek, 
fresh and new, like a fresh baked donut or pie coming out of the oven, right? I mean, that's what it literally means. And that five-day-old pie, man, it just tastes good, right? I mean, it still tastes good. But man, that fresh baked apple pie, pastor appreciation, uh, anyways, <laughs> that fresh baked apple pie coming out of that oven beats that five old day apple pie every day, doesn't it? That's the intent of this word, making things new. It's like a fresh pie coming out of the oven. This new means it's never been used. This new means, listen to this, it's superior to the old. Superior to the old. I love what this theologian Hitchcock says about the new heaven. Listen to this. What the king's men could not do with Humpty Dumpty. When I read that this week, I'm like, that's a good one. I'm... What the king's men could not do with Humpty Dumpty, God will do for the universe. He will gather all the building blocks of the original creation and make a brand, listen to this, a brand new universe. Brand new. Like it's not already good. We see this side of heaven. We see the Grand Canyon, the mountains, the streams, and all this stuff. This side of heaven. We see the decay portion. What about the glorious portion? What about, Lord, it took the Lord to, I mean, in our time, right? I get it. A thousand years is like a day, and a day is like a thousand years. But like 2,000 years in our time to build this new heaven and new earth, I mean, it's going to be so glorious, we can't even imagine. How glorious is heaven well, before we get into the, be the, 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 the beauty and splendor of heaven itself, I thought it best to tell you who and what's not going to be in heaven. We'll start there. Next week, we're going to get into the splendor. We're going to get into dimensions. It's going to blow your mind. But I want to tell you this morning who and what's not going to be in heaven. The cowardly the unbelievers, the vile, murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, in other words, translation, witchcraft, the idolaters, and all liars in the political system. Just put my hand over my mouth so they couldn't hear me. That's pretty, we're not going to even go there. All the liars and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. We'll say, that's mean, Pastor. You shouldn't be talking like that. I didn't say it. God did. There's the scripture. You don't like me, you don't like God. That's what the word of God says. And guess what? I don't want them there. And God's not going to allow them there, right? So let me tell you, let me give it to you in our cultural context. There will be no bullies, violence, gangs, human traffickers, no drugs or addictions, no sexual perversions of any kind, abortion, gone in Jesus' name. And I'm just telling you right now from the pulpit to get everything clear, I'm always voting for life. You align what that means. You align what that means. I am always voting for life. Abortion in heaven, gone in Jesus' name. No theft, no bad attitudes, no cursing, no, backstab no backstabbing. Hopelessness is eradicated. Bribery and politics, gone. And to cover everything else, there will be no power or presence of evil ever again. No more Satan and no more demons. And I'm excited because I can't wait till that gets eradicated. 
Because I'm a pastor and I've seen the pain of the world, the pain that you go through, the pain that I go through. There's suffering. There's hardship. As Christians, right? Jesus didn't promise like, hey, come to me and your life is just going to go grandiose. Like it's going to be a bunch of roses and petals, right? It's going to be tough and hard. How glorious is heaven? The Lord says this. He is wiping all the tears away. So there will be no sadness. There will be no anger, frustration, no worry, no depression, no anxiety, no fits of rage or fear. There will never be a reason to shed a tear again. That's glorious. And we could only experience that in heaven. How glorious in heaven. I just got to keep going, my friends. The Lord's word says, no more death or or pain for the old order of things is passing away. Hallelujah. The old order of things, no more death or pain. So there's no suffering, no more in heaven, no suffering, no suicide in heaven, amen, eradicated, no desperate thoughts, no aches and pains, praise God, right? As you get a little older, you're going to appreciate that a little more. No aches and pains any longer. Aging is gone. No more bald spots. (laughs) Praise God, you can't see mine. It's in the back of me. (laughs) Aging is gone. This is one of my favorites here. Cancer and all other insidious diseases go directly to hell forever. Where it belongs. Many cancer survivors in this room. No more insidious diseases. No more emergency telephone calls in the middle of the night. No more bad news from a relative or a family or a friend that says, I got this terminal illness and I'm going to die. No more of that in heaven. Jesus says, I am making everything new, completely new. Not Salvation Army new. And lastly, the Lord says there will be no temple, nor sun or moon. The pearly gates will never be shut. The pearly gates, we're going to talk about the gates, friends, are made of a whole pearl. A whole pearl. The pearly gates will never be shut. There will be no longer any nighttime and nothing impure will ever be allowed. So, no more hot sun and humidity. Gone. No sunburns. The light of Christ will be our light. We don't need it anymore. The light of Jesus Christ will be our light. There's going to be no gates or fences to keep the bad guys out. No need for any cameras and rewinds and, hey, what is that? And where did they go? No, it's gone. No toxins. No air pollution. No need for uh, new energy and the clean new deal. Gone in Jesus' name. We don't need it. Air pollution got no toxic water, and we will never thirst again. Hallelujah. Never thirst again. We're going to eat from the apple of the tree of life. And there's a river flowing down through the new Jerusalem like you've never seen before. We're going to get into that. Friends, Jesus said he is making everything new. 
He is not slow in keeping his promise, but he wants everyone come to everlasting life in Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I'm making everything new. Amen? Stand with me in closing this morning. Everything new, man, like a brand new apple pie. (laughs) I think I'm going to have an apple pie today. I think I am going to have an apple pie today. That's okay. Right? Apple pie is okay. Jesus, we thank you for this sermon. We thank you, Lord, that we can look forward to heaven where, Lord, we come. And we thank you, Lord, for refreshing us in your word that says, Lord, you're not slow. You're not slow in keeping your promise, but Lord, you are patient with us. And Lord, how compassionate and loving that is, that you are patient, Lord, with humanity, that no one should perish, but that all would have everlasting life. And Lord Jesus, right now, I pray for those that don't know you in their lives that don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Lord, that those people that have no hope of heaven because, Lord Jesus, they haven't invited you to be the Lord of their lives. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I pray for them right now, Lord, that you would send someone to tell them about the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, that you would save them from the pits of hell, Heavenly Father, that you would restore them, that you would continue to love them, Heavenly Father. Lord, as the example, as we read about the prodigal son, Lord, always standing there for us to come to. Lord Jesus, have mercy and compassion on people. Lord, I pray over every individual and every family member that is attended here this morning, those that are listening online. Lord Jesus, may they be blessed in their coming and their going, their rising up and their lying down. Lord, give them great joy with great expectation, with the joy and glorious splendor that we'll have in heaven. In the mighty name of Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed. Have a great day. We're going to get into... The peeking into heaven about the glory and splendor. We don't, we don't.